Hey everyone, welcome to your fourth Roblox scripting tutorial, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at events. Now, events detect when something happens. They are triggered when an action occurs. That's when they are fired. And scripts can pick up events when they are fired, and they can run a function, as we looked at in the last video. Uh, events are coded by Roblox behind the scenes and basically all that happens when an event is fired at is it'll go to the function that you told it to run and it will run that function also there are no parameters in events um, that we have to specify they are automatically given to the uh, function but we'll look into that after uh, let's go ahead and look at some events for a part so all of these objects do have their own events for example a player will have the the player service right here has an event called player added so we can know when players are in the game and parts have an event called touch so we know when a player touches that part for example um, lava bricks when a player touches that part a script runs it connects a function and the function kills the player that's how it works and by the way that's what it's uh, that's what uh, running a function when an event fi is fired is called it's called connecting the function to the event so let's go ahead and look at some of the events for this part so if we go over to view right here and click object browser we can see a list of every object in Roblox Studio all of these, all of these objects have their own properties uh, functions and events for example if I go down to uh, part right here we can see all of these functions right here but we'll look at those in a later video these are all the properties that we know of anchored color uh, can collide and down here are the events. So these lightning bolt symbols are events. These are properties, the uh, parts or the boxes. Don't worry about these right now. And these are the uh, functions. I'm pretty sure these are also functions. Um, yeah, so right here we have the events. And we're going to be looking at this event right here. It's called touched. And right here we can see is instance other part. That is a parameter the script will provide to us. We'll look at that in a, a few seconds here. All right, guys, now in our script, we're going to be creating our function and then connecting it to our event. So we're going to type function. Uh, let's say player touched the part, two brackets, and then we'll drop down a few lines. We're going to type print player touched the part. And then after here, we can uh, you know connect the function to the actual event. So game dot workspace dot row dev, which is the part's name. And by the way, I want to talk about class name real quick. This is the part's class name. And in the object browser, these are all class names. So the name of the part does not matter. The class name is actually uh, what it is. So the part will never change because it is a part. But the name we can always change it. So if we go back to our script, uh, we can type dot, and this list comes up. And right here is the touched event. It's our first time using the lightning bolt symbol. So let's go ahead and put it in. And uh, what we can do now is connect the function. So we're going to hit colon and then type connect and then two brackets. So in here, we can actually type the name of the function player touch the part. And we actually don't put these two brackets right here. We leave it as is. And as you can see, uh, if I hit play, when I touch the part, what's going to happen is it's going to fire the event. But as you can see, it fires many, many times. And that's because all my different body parts are actually touching the part, including my, you know, lower foot, my, uh, you know, leg, lower leg, that kind of stuff. It's all touching the part over and over again. So I'm actually going to go ahead and type something out, and it's going to print what part actually touched it. So this function right here, I should say part touched or, or other part touched part. It's not players touching parts, it's parts touching each other. So uh, instead we're going to say that, just to make it a bit more simple and understandable as to what it actually is. And in inside this print statement, what we're going to do is, right, uh, right, right before that, let's go ahead and get the actual parameter. The parameter is called, well actually let's go back to the object browser and we can see other part. Event touched, instance, other part. Instance is basically anything here, these are all instances. and. Uh, Basically, the instance that we're going to be looking at is other part, and we can actually get that right here. So I'm going to name it uh, other part, and right here we can do part touched. Just don't worry about what I'm doing here. I'm going to type other part. I'm going to hit play, and uh, as you can see, we have a quick error. Right, we just have to type other part dot name. As uh, remember, other part is going to be an actual part, and then we have to go to the properties of that other part and get the name. So once you've done this, you can hit play and test it out yourself. 
as you can see it says part touch the base plate because it did touch the base plate and now you can see it's touching my right foot, right lower leg, left foot, left lower leg, all of that stuff. It's also touching other things uh, inside my character sometimes, like the humanoid for example. And as you can see, as I touch it, it tells us what's actually touching the part. But yeah, that's how this uh, touched, uh, touched event works. Now I'm going to go over a more known way, or the most uh, more commonly used way to you know connect uh, functions. So I'm going to get rid of this, and right here, I'm going to get rid of this as well. I'm going to open this up a little bit, and in here, we're going to create our function. And now this function actually will not have a name. It's an anonymous function. And basically, we just type two brackets, drop down, and as you can see, it looks like this. So this function does not have a name. But what it does have is uh, parameters, as we looked at um, earlier, or just now. It's called other part. And uh, the name doesn't matter, by the way. This could also just be called something like hit. And we'll actually use hit, but remember, this is just the other part. But yeah, this is how it looks like. This is the most common way, and I'll actually show you guys a better uh, way to do this. But for simple, uh, for uh, simplistic reasons, right now, let's do it like this. So it's an it's an anonymous function. It does not have a name. And as you can see, we have our parameter Roblox gave uh, Roblox gave to us, and there's an end right there. So in here, it is literally the exact same thing. We can do print. Uh, part touched hit dot name. Remember, hit is in uh, hit will be a part, and then we go to the properties of that part, and we print the name. If I hit play, part uh, the exact same thing happens. Part touched the base play. Part touched every uh, part of my character. And real quick, I'm just going to show you guys the characters are made up of parts. As you can see, all of these are parts. They are different kinds of parts, but as you can see, the class name is a mesh part. It is still a part. So I'm going to go back to the script now. And I'm going to show you guys a better way to do this. So we're just going to get rid of some of this. We're going to move this here, get rid of some of this, move it up there. And there we go. This is how most Roblox developers like to do it. This is a really simple way, save space. You don't have to create a whole new function. And yeah, this is the way you'll see it in most of my videos as well in uh, s tutorials such as the simulator series. As you can see, we connect. And then instead of putting a function inside the connect, we actually create a function. So, you know, that's pretty cool. We create a function and then we put it in here at the same time. And we don't have to name it because of that. And right here is our parameter. And then we use our parameter here. All right, the next thing I want to look at, guys, is one more object and the, uh, you know, functions or events, actually. So uh, that object is going to be the player's uh, service. So this is actually a service, if you remember from the first video, all of these are top level services. And the player service does have its own events. It is an object in the object browser. So if we find players right here, as you can see, it has its own properties. It has its own functions. It has its own events as well. And these are what we're looking at in this video. So let's go ahead and look at the player added event. So inside the script, let's go ahead and do game dot players dot player added colon connect as we just learned and then function and just like that, we can hit enter, and that's exactly what we did in the other script, or in this script, just a few seconds ago. As you can see, we connect, and then we create an anonymous function, and we don't even have to name it, it's just there, and the script knows that this is the function we'll be using. And in here, there is actually going to be a parameter that Roblox gives us, instance player, so that's going to be the actual instance of the player. I'm going to join the game and show you guys what the instance of the player looks like. Right here is my instance. There are a bunch of properties right here, you know, auto jump enabled, um, display name, replication focus, you know, user ID, uh, things like that. This is gameplay paused, only can uh, be done from the server. We can actually mess around with that in a second if we want. So I'm gonna go back to the script, and what I'm gonna do is get the player in here, and I'm gonna make it this. I'm gonna make this a bit long just so you guys understand. Player that joined the game, and there we go. So now what we're gonna do is print player joined, actually not even player joined the game, we're going to do player that joined the game and then uh, joined the game, hit play and again I forgot to type dot name because remember this is actually an instance as I just said oh I'm going to ignore the error and I'm going to show you guys this is my player instance and this is the name property that I was trying to get so I'm actually going to go back and type dot name and I'm going to hit play and as you can see, it's like, it says my username joined the game, and this will work for any player. And re real quick, I'm going to show you guys, if I type wait up here, watch what happens. Interestingly enough, 
it won't say it because um, it's not listening for the event to be fired until five seconds after. That's why when you see a, a script like this, you're gonna see this event at the top because it needs to be running as soon as the game is going, and uh, it cannot be waiting. As I just did, it's not gonna detect when players join the game if it waits a little bit. Say a player joins the game while we're waiting, and then um, you know, then it's uh, connected. That basically just means that it missed when the player joined the game. It didn't catch it, and the function was never ran. I hope that makes sense. It's a bit complicated. I hope it made sense. But yeah, that's basically how events work. And yeah, now you guys know how events work. You guys know how to you know look at events for any object and then use those events. Since I showed you guys how to get the actual parameters and then use those parameters. There's also one for player removing. And for this week, I'm gonna give you guys some homework. I'm actually gonna start doing that every week, or not every week. But for, you know, every, you know, between videos, sorry for saying week, but between videos, I'm going to give you guys homework, and for uh, this video, the homework will be to use the player removing event and print something that says the player uh, left the game. But yeah, other than that, guys, it's Rodev. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you learned something from this video, and it's helping you, you know, get better at scripting. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.